Greetings, science family. This is part two for the worksheet number three, balancing equations. Let's go through some more and make sure we're feeling confident with that. For number seven, let's get started right away. I'm going to split my reactants and products in half. I'm going to make sure that I have the same amount on both sides. So I've got two hydrogen and two hydrogen to start, so I'm happy with that. But I have two oxygen and one oxygen. So I definitely need to make two oxygen on the product side. So I'm going to put that two there. That two is going to give me two oxygen, perfect. But now it's also going to give me four hydrogen. So I'm gonna to need to do two times two hydrogen over here to give me four hydrogen. And I end up balancing it with a two, one, two. Two hydrogen, I'm sorry, four hydrogen and two hydro oxygen on each side. Let's look at number eight. Number eight, it looks like the only things unbalanced are the bromines and the chlorines. So let's take care of that. If I make the chlorines equal, I've got two on the reactant side. So let's make two chlorines on the product side. But remember, that two goes to the sodium and the chlorine. So now that I have two chlorine, I'm good. But now I have two sodiums here. So I'm going to need to put a two here to give me two sodiums. But remember, that two distributes to the bromine as well. But lucky for me, that's good because I needed two bromines anyways to balance out with that. So in the end, that I ended up with a one, two, two, one balanced equation. Let's take a look at the next one here. I've got zinc, copper, sulfur, and oxygen. I've got one zinc, one zinc, one copper, one copper, one sulfur, one sulfur, four oxygen, four oxygen. That means this thing is balanced all the way across. So we are good to go there. Nice. That was short. This next one, let's balance out. I've got one potassium, one potassium, one chlorine, one chlorine. Okay, so far balanced. Ah, three oxygen, two oxygen. So three oxygen and two oxygen mean that I'm going to need to make them both six. That's the number they both can be. So if I do three times two, I'm going to have six oxygen. I'm going to do two times three here. But remember, that two is going to go to the K and the Cl and the oxygen. So because of that, I now have two KCLs here, all with the six oxygen. So I'm just going to make sure then that I put a two here to give me two KCL as well so they can balance out. And now that I did that, I'm good. It's balanced with a two, two, three. Moving on to number 11. Let's split that in half by reactants and products. It looks like my oxygens are off a little bit. I've got one oxygen and three oxygen. So I'm gonna to have to put a three here to give me three oxygen. But remember, that three also distributes to the hydrogen. That gives me six hydrogen. So that means I'm gonna to need to put a three over here. That will give me six hydrogen as well. Okay, so who's happy? I think my oxygens are happy, my hydrogen's happy. Only my irons aren't. I've got two irons over there, so I'm gonna to need to put a two there. But once I balance that all out, I think I'm good. Three, two, one, three. Taking a look at the next problem, question number 12 is a little bit longer, so I had to shrink it down a little bit, but no problem. Let's take a look if there's anything. There's a lot going on here, but something I noticed is that NO3 stays chunked together. So notice how I have two of these NO3s. I'm going to put a two here in hopes that that starts helping with everything else. Now that I put a two there, that makes two hydrogen there. But there's also hydrogen over here, and there's two. So two plus two hydrogen makes four hydrogen. So I'm going to put a two in there. So now I have four hydrogen, two times two. But that also gives me two times one oxygen, so I have two oxygens. For me, I already have two oxygens, so my oxygens are balanced now. My hydrogens are balanced now. My NO3s or my nitrates are balanced now. And one calcium and one calcium is balanced as well. So even though this looked pretty ugly in the beginning, it became a one, two, one, two balanced equation. Not too bad. Looking at number 13, I'm gonna divide in half for my reactants and products. Two sodium, two sodium, one carbon, one carbon. I've got one oxygen and two oxygen. So one plus two is three oxygen and oh, got three oxygen there. So everything ended up being balanced, how nice. That was straightforward. Let's look at number 14 then. 14, I'm going to divide up into my reactants and products. 
it looks like my hydrogens are off, two and three. If they're two and three, the nearest number they can both be is six, so I'm gonna do three times two to make six hydrogen, and also two times three to make six hydrogen. But since I put the two there, don't forget that two goes to the hydrogen and the nitrogen. But now that makes two nitrogen, and I already have two nitrogen on the reactant side. So six hydrogens and two nitrogens on both sides makes this balanced. Awesome. 15 is up next. Let's divide reactants and products. I have, ooh, let's see here, one oxygen and two oxygens. So I'm going to need to get two oxygens on the reactant side. When I do that, that two also distributes to my mercury, 2HG, which means I'm going to need to put a two on the product side to give me two mercury, but now that also made two chlorines. Good news for me is I already have two chlorines on the reactant side, so now I have two mercury, two oxygens, and two chlorines everywhere. So that becomes a two, one, two, one balanced equation. Nice. We've got 16 coming up, and if I divide 16 by the reactants and products, I see that my bromines are unequal or uneven. I've got two bromines on the reactant side and only one bromine on the product side. So that means I'm going to need two bromines in order to balance out. And that two also distributes to the sodium, which means that now that I have two sodiums over here, I need two over here and everything ends up balancing with a two, one, two for the coefficients. Remember the coefficients are the big numbers, subscripts, are the little tiny numbers that are already part of the compound. Looking at number 17, let's split things up between reactants and products. For number 17, I have one potassium and one chlorine, one potassium and one chlorine, but my oxygens are off with three and two. We have three and two, we need to make them both six. So two times three will give me six. And there's my three times two will give me six. But remember that two also distributes to the other guys. So now I have two potassium chlorides as well. So I'm gonna need to put my two there. But once I did that, I balanced out two potassiums, two chlorines and six oxygens on both sides. Taking a look at 18, divide reactants and products. This one looks like a lot going on, but pay attention, my NO3, my nitrate, is one whole chunk. That might help me out, so I'm gonna use that to my benefit here. Since I have two nitrates here and only one here, I'm gonna put a two here to get that going. By doing that, I now have two nitrates, but I also have two hydrogens. I also have two hydrogens over here as well, so that's a total of four. So four hydrogens. I'm gonna to need to put a two on the product side to give me that four hydrogens. But that two times oxygen also gives me two. And there's two there already. One calcium, one calcium. This ends up balancing out. One, two, one, two. Checking out number 19, divide our reactants and products. I have three oxygen and two oxygen that are not equal, so I need to find a multiplication that will make them the same. Six is the magic number. So if I do two times three oxygen, that'll give me six. And if I do three times two oxygen, that'll give me six. The two times two aluminum gives me four. So I'm gonna have to put a four there. That ends up being two, four, three for number 19. Looking at number 20, divide my reactants and products in half. Let's take a look and see what's not the same. Two chlorines and one chlorine on the reactant and product side. So I'm gonna put a two there. By putting a two there, that's also going to give my hydrogen, make it two, but that's already a two as well. So now my hydrogens and chlorines are equal. One sulfur, one sulfur, one copper, one copper. Nice. Everything is balanced. One, 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 two to balance it out. I like that. Looking at question 21, let's divide reactants and products. I've got two chlorines over here, only one. So I'm going to put a two there. By doing that too, it gives me two chlorines, but it also gives me now two times one sodium. So if I have two sodium on the product side, I'm gonna need a two here to give two sodium on the reactant side. When I did that, that two also distributes to the bromine, which gives me now two, and I already have two bromine. So I end up balancing this at a one, two, two, one with coefficients. Excellent. Let's rock out 22. Gonna divide my reactants and products in half. 
From there, let's see what we have. I have one sodium and one sodium. So products and reactants are equal in that. I have one oxygen and one oxygen. So I'm, they're equal there. Ooh, take a look at this. I've got one hydrogen and one hydrogen on the reactant side. So that gives me a total of two hydrogen on the reactant side. Ooh, and I already have two hydrogen. And I, the last thing is one chlorine and one chlorine. So believe it or not, this one actually was already balanced. So we didn't have to do anything to it. How nice. Let's look at 23 then. 23, let's take away, or not take away, but divide out the reactants and products by drawing a line there. And let's start balancing this out. I've got two sodium, two sodium. So those are already balanced. One carbon, one carbon. That's already balanced. I now have one oxygen and two oxygen. So I have a total of three oxygen on the reactant side. And up, uh, I've got three oxygen on the product side. Hey, well, that's nice. This one's balanced as well. So I can leave it blank or draw ones in there. How nice. And last but not least, let's split that up reactants and product side. Let's see, I've got two hydrogen, two hydrogen. So that's okay. Got one iron and two iron. Oh, okay, they're off. And it looks like I have one oxygen and three oxygen. Okay, well, we're gonna have to tackle that for sure. So the two, uh, let's do the three oxygen really quick. In order to make three oxygen on the reactant side, I have to use the coefficient three, right? That's gonna make three oxygen. But that three also goes to the hydrogen. So three times two hydrogen makes six hydrogen. But at least now, my three oxygens are balanced, but now I've got these six hydrogens. So I'm gonna to need to do three times two hydrogens over here to give me those six hydrogens. All right, well, those are balanced out. Now I just gotta focus on my irons. I've got two irons over here, so I need to make two irons on the reactant side. And I'll do that by just two times the one iron, I end up with two irons and I already had two irons over here. If I double check, three oxygen, three oxygen, balanced. Two irons, two irons, balanced. Six hydrogen, six hydrogens, balanced. So this becomes a three, two, blank or one, three to balance out. All right, excellent, nice job. Hopefully you're starting to be more and more confident with balancing equations. It's important to be able to do since we'll have to use this skill to move forward into what we call stoichiometry, where we start predicting, hey, if we mix these two reactants together, we can predict how much product we actually get out. So balanced equations will be super important. But nice job, science fam.